The Durban Chamber of Commerce now, where it says it cannot afford for Transnet operations to come to a standstill. This as unions representing Transnet workers rejected a 3% increase offer by the employer. Now members have downed tools and Transnet port terminals has declared a force majeure. The president of the chamber says it will support Transnet as it is one of its members. For the very latest on this, we speak to Desan Thathia, senior reporter in uh, Durban for us this afternoon. Uh, Desan, the Chamber of Commerce there in Durban painted a really bleak picture of the consequences that could result from a force majeure. Uh, we've seen this when there was a cyber attack at Transnet during the uh, floods as well as the July unrest. And I mean, uh, it's certainly not a, a region of the country that can afford uh, strike action of this nature that leads to another force majeure. Not at all, Rofiwa. And in fact, that is what uh, you know. The conversation we were having with the Durban Chamber earlier was about the possible worst-case scenario. But fortunately, we're not there yet. I mean, I was mentioning to you earlier that the operations in Durban, in particular, and I guess Richards Bay to a certain extent as well, is not affected to the extent where port operations and regular business is not continuing. But those conversations that we've been having are around what, how detrimental the impact to the economy could be if those wage negotiations are not resolved immediately. And, and we do see that full-blown strike that could potentially be on Monday. But to get a better understanding of what's happening, particularly in the Durban port, I'm now joined by the Durban port manager, Moshe Matloi. Sir, thank you so much for joining me. I think let's start there with the concern and uh, I guess a certain degree of panic that is setting in. What's it looking like at the port today? Are you finding a lot of the employees uh, that are not at work or have they down tools as they, they have threatened to do so? Thank you for giving us an opportunity to explain the situation. Look, uh, as of today, when we looked at uh, Transit National Port Authority employees that have stayed away from work, is 12% of our complement, which is around 1,200. Only 12% had stayed away from work as of today. In Richards Bay, 14%. I need to also give the assurance that the disturbances that we saw yesterday at Richards Bay, where the port was uh, shut off by protesters, that was resolved yesterday afternoon. Mm -hmm. And throughout the night and this morning, up until now, the port is fully accessible. The same applies to the port of Teben, where those who want to do business with the port can come to the port. We really are having a stable environment. Yes, we have noted that there are businesses that are affected by the strike. Mm. Management of those entities are taking care of it. But I must emphasize that in the port of Tebe, for example, majority of terminal operators are privately run, and as a result, they are not affected by the strike from getting their ship and the cargo out of their facility is conserved. That is, if they are using a different mode of transport. Mm. Our interest right now is to really appeal to our employees and everyone else to heed the call of coming back and help the port to function fully mm. as we are at peak and we really want to see this result. We're doing this as a way of saying the company has been open around what needs to be done and we're doing exactly that. And we've got a reputation with them Mm. where throughout COVID looting storms. Yeah. We really have been with them, and we hope that we will resolve the issues. Mr. Mutlu, what kind of contingency plans are there in place? We did see a statement from Transnet saying that even if the strike does go ahead, business will, will, not, will not stop, and there are plans in place to ensure that the work gets done. How are you going to deal with that, particularly at your port? Look, if you're looking at the TNPA side, uh, where our responsibility includes, amongst others, to bring the ships in and out of the port, personnel that operate our tax are all at management level, so they are not participating in a strike. That on itself is a built-in contingency where we say we can always bring ships in and out of the port. We also are looking at other options that I cannot divulge here for obvious reasons of saying, how do we give those ancillary services that enable that to happen. But the helicopters, the tugboats, and everything else is working, firefighting. Those uh, are areas that we are considering. And we are also working with customers to say in which other areas can we collaborate. We have taken a decision this morning 
that we are going to have daily briefing, face-to-face -face sessions with the customers so that jointly we can deal with the situation as it arises. Our focus will always be on the next 72 hours rolling so that we can be ahead of the curve and look at the trends, how many ships are coming, what is the level of stock in hand, how then to work a plan that evacuates that. And central to that will be constant collaboration with the law enforcement agencies. I was going to touch on that, sorry to interrupt, I was going to ask you about the safety of workers that choose not to participate or others that are going to be coming in and out of the port during this period. Look, as you would know that our physical uh, geographic area is defined, we know where the port starts, where it ends. That area is uh, enough to say everyone who is within that space is safe. We also want to appeal to whoever who is a part of this industrial action to consider that we've got tomorrow to secure. Mm. Today we might be having difficulties, but uh, tomorrow mm. is Therefore, those who choose to come to work are allowed to do so. Mm. As we have said as Transnet, that uh, we do not think that uh, it, it was necessary that we were at because there are a few other things that ought to have been done to avert this. And we hope that everyone is going to think twice because uh, there's a lot at stake for men and jobs that are dependent on us and we need to really to allow that to happen so that we can have a passage if you like safe passage for people to come to work and work thank you so much for your time Mushle Mushle, they're speaking on behalf of the uh, durban port you would conversation earlier, Rufiwa, that uh, the impact to the economy is quite significant. The chamber estimating that any shutdown of the port could cost the economy close to a billion rand a day. No, that's absolutely true, Desen Fafia. Um, the economic cost to actions of this nature is quite severe. But we'll catch up with you.